Hey everybody, uh, this uh, lesson is understanding geometric sequences. Okay, so we did arithmetic sequences uh, before the break. This is our first uh, lesson after the first semester, so we're at the beginning of the second semester. So arithmetic sequences, uh, we did like plus five, plus five, plus five, you know, or plus three, plus three, or, or maybe they subtracted the same amount, but they were numbers that just kept increasing or decreasing by the same amount. Geometric sequences, they also increase or decrease depending on what we call R. Okay, and don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com and then this is an integrated math one class. So here we go. So in a geometric sequence, the ratio of the two successive terms is constant. Okay, in, a, in the arithmetic, it was the, the common difference, which was D. We'll talk about that in a second. So so the common ratio is, is denoted by the letter R in geometric sequences. And you can find R by taking any two successive terms. Successive means the terms that are next to each other. And taking the right number divided by the left number. Or you can write it as a fraction and do righty divided by lefty that way. And, and I, I typically do it like this, uh, uh, right number over left number. Okay, so here in the geometric sequence, uh, it goes 3, 6, 12. Can you see them doubling all the time? Okay, so check this out. We're doing, uh, this is the right number divided by the left number. See, here's 6 divided by 3. The next one is righty divided by lefty. The next one is righty divided by lefty. That's what this says right here. This says right here, righty divided by lefty. In all of these cases, it's 2. So the common ratio for the sequence is 2. Okay, and then so the next term is going to be, if I take this number and multiply it by 2, 48 times 2 is going to give us 96 right there. All right, so notice that as you go to the right in a geometric sequence, you multiply by R. So this is times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So when you go to the right, you multiply by R. And when you go to the left, you divide by R. You divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Sometimes our R is a negative number. Sometimes it's a fraction. We'll have examples of both of those. So suppose we know that the 12th uh, term in a geometric sequence what else do we need to know to find the 13th term, and then how would we do that? Well, we would need to know what is R, what's our common ratio. Then whatever R is, we'd multiply that to the 12th term, and that'd get us to the 13th term, because the 12th term is right here. The 13th term would be over here to the right, so when you go to the right, you multiply by R. When you go to the left, you divide by R. Okay, suppose we know uh, only that 8 and 128 are terms in a geometric sequence. Can we find the term that follows 128? And if so, what is it? Well, the only way we could is if we either knew what R was or if we knew that 8 and 128 were successive terms. If they were successive terms, then we'd take a, a righty divided by lefty, and so we'd get 16 on that. And so the next term would be this term times R, so times 16. So it's 128 times 16. But if we don't know that they're successive terms or not, then we wouldn't be able to find the next term without knowing what our common ratio is with R. Here, here's an example, you guys. Here's 8 right here. Here's 128 right here. And look, they're not successive terms. They have three terms in between them right here. So here you'd have to do, let's see, I'd pick these two numbers. You can pick any two numbers you want, but I pick the numbers that are easy to uh, compute with. So 16 divided by 8 is 2, so 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 times 2 times 2, so 128 times 2 would be 256. But without knowing what R is or if they're successive or not, we wouldn't be able to know that. Okay, all right, so recall that in an arithmetic sequence, the nth term can be found by, this was a long time ago, so you might have forgotten, I'm sure you did. So we did the first term, that's what f of 1 is, plus d, which is our common difference, righty minus lefty we did, and then um, uh, times n minus 1, okay? So um, for example, you guys, here we have this uh, uh, arithmetic sequence. Can you see it's going plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5? And to calculate D, we did right number minus left number. So I picked the two smallest ones to deal with. But 13 minus 8 is also equal to 5. 18 minus 13 is also equal to 5. So D is equal to 5. So say, for example, they wanted to find the 20th term. Okay, the 20th term, we just uh, pick the first term right here. So that's this 3 right here. This 3 is the first term. 
plus 5, because our common difference is uh, 5, so that's what this d is right here, times 20 minus 1, and 20 minus 1 is 19. So 5 times 19 is 95, 3 plus 95 is 98. So you could keep doing this, you guys. You can go plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, and all the way up to get your 20th term, it'll be 98. Or you can use this quick, short formula. All right, in a geometric sequence, I'm going to call it GS from now on. The nth term can be found by, you take your first term and you multiply it times R to the n minus 1 power right here. And remember, order of operations says we have to do exponents first. So let's try one of these, okay? So here's a bungee jumper, and that would be me scared for my life. I know some of you young kids would like it, but that would scare me. Anyway, a bungee jumper jumps from a bridge. The table shows the bungee jumper's height above the ground at the top of each bounce, okay? So the bungee jumper is up at this bridge, and he goes, and he, he stretches out, and then he bounces back up right here, okay? So the first bounce is 200 feet. The second bounce is 80 feet. The third bounce is 32 feet, okay? So these heights form a geometric sequence. So what's the bungee jumper's height at the top of the fist? Bounce. Okay, well, the first thing we've got to do is calculate R, okay? There's a picture of it right there. He jumps up, and then it jumps up a little bit more and a little bit more. Pretty soon he stops moving, okay? So there's our formula. So F of N equals the first term times R to the N minus 1, okay? So let's find R. Pick righty divided by lefty. You can either do this divided by this or this divided by this. Since these end in zeros, I'm going to pick that one right there, okay? Righty divided by lefty. In this case, it's bottom divided by top. So I took this number divided by this number right here, and then the zeros cancel, and then we have 8 over 20, and then um, uh, 4 goes into 8 2 times, 4 goes into 25 times, so R is 2 fifths, okay? So now we're going to plug 2 fifths right there, and we know the first term. The first term is 200, okay? So now it's number crunching right here, you guys. So here it is. So the fifth term, that's what they're asking for. What's the top of the fifth term? So this is going to be n minus 1 or 5 minus 1. So we got to do 2 fifths. I'm going to take this picture away right here. 2 fifths um, uh, to the 4th power because it's 5 minus 1 power. Okay, 2 to the 4th is um, 16. And 5 to the 4th is 625. And then these two, I can divide these down by 25s. Okay, and we get 128 over over 25, okay, which is equal to 5 and 3 25 feet, or 5.12 feet. So let's answer the question in the context of the problem. The height of the jumper at the top of the fifth jump is going to be 5.12 uh, feet, okay? Let's try another one. The ball is dropped from a height of 8 meters. The table shows the height of each bounce. The heights form a geometric sequence. How how high does the ball bounce on the seventh bounce? Okay, round the answer to the nearest tenth of a meter. Okay, this is just like the last one. So we got to find R. There's R. So I just picked any two numbers, bottom divided by top. It's 0.75. So here's our formula right there. And there's F of 1 right here. Here's our first term, 6. So R is 0.75, and we're looking for the seventh term. So it's going to be F of 7 equals 6 uh, times 0.75 to the uh, 7 minus 1 power, which is the 6th power, okay? This is n minus 1, since this is n equals 7. Okay, now it's number crunching. We have to do this exponent first, so 0.75 to the 6th power is that, and then we multiply that times 6. So it says round our answer to the nearest tenth of a meter, and let's answer the question. So on the seventh bounce, the ball, the ball will bounce 1.1 meters. So we rounded it to the nearest tenth. This is tenth right here. This is hundredth. This is thousandths. So this uh, 0.6 or 0 0.06 makes this round up to 1. Okay? Now, I'd like you to get used to doing this formula, but let's say you're taking a test, you guys, and you don't know what to do. What you, what you can do is just keep multiplying by r until you get your seventh term. So since r is 0.75, just multiply times 0.75 times 0.75 till you get down to your seventh term. You'll still get 1.1. Okay? Same answer. All right, so find the common ratio uh, of each geometric sequence and use R to find the next three terms. Okay, so righty divided by lefty. So 12 divided by 6 is 2. So to get the next three terms, we just multiply by 2 three times. So 
48 times 2 is 96. 96 times 2 is 192, and 192 times 2 is 384. Okay, this guy, r is righty divided by lefty. I like these two ones, because this is, there it is, right there. There's r staring right at you, so it's negative one-third. So to get the next three terms, we multiply by negative one-third. Okay, so negative one-third times negative one-third is positive one-ninth. And then look how r, r is a negative number, it makes our terms alternate in signs. It goes positive, negative, positive, negative, times r, times r, times r. The next one is negative 1 27th, and then negative 1 27th times negative 1 3rd is, is positive 1 over 81. Okay, so, hey, suppose all the terms of a geometric sequence are positive and the common ratio is somewhere between 0 and 1. Is the sequence increasing or decreasing? Well, we had an example like that. I'll remind you what it was. So when r is between 0 and 1, all the terms are positive, and if all the terms are positive, each term is less than the preceding term, so the sequence is decreasing. So remember, here's our bungee jumper. r was equal to 2 fifths right here. So look at the terms. This is 200, then it goes to 80, then it goes to 32. When you're multiplying by a number that's less than 1, it makes these numbers decrease all the time, okay? All right, so the next question is asking uh, if the common ratio of a geometric sequence is less than 0, like that one we had negative one-third, what do we know about the signs of the terms, okay? Well, it makes them alternate. They, make, they go positive, negative, positive, negative. So here's that example that we had where r was equal to negative one-third. It went positive, negative, positive, negative. So if the first term is negative, then it goes negative, positive, negative, positive. If the first term is positive, then it goes positive, negative, positive, negative. All right, you guys, if you were in my class, I would assign that. Take care.